Now let's add a second RFP. Plug the second RFP into the PoE network. Again, if the network does not support PoE, you can use the optional power cable. As with the first RFP, make sure your PC is on the same subnet as the second RFP. Use the OMM system CD and launch the configurator. Click on the scan button and watch the status in the bottom left corner. Scan request OK. This time, I see two MAC addresses. Verify the new MAC address address matches the second RFP. It does. Click on the second MAC address. Click on the login checkbox and enter the default username and password information. The default is OMM, all lowercase, for both fields. We will continue down to Use Local Configuration. Select Yes if you were assigning a static IP address to the RFP. Next, I'll enter in the second RFP's static IP address. Again, I got this from the network administrator. It is 10.70.109.165. Enter the subnet mask, minus 255.255.255.0. Enter the TFTP server address. I am going to use a standalone TFTP program, so I will enter my PC's IP address. Enter the TFTP file name. Again, for RFPs L35 and L36, it is IP RFP 3G.dnld. Enter the OMM IP address, which was the IP address of the first RFP we installed. 10.70. .109.152. Enter the router addresses. This is your gateway router IP address. Click on the plus sign and enter the IP address. I'll add the same parameters as I did on the first RFP. DNS addresses, NTP server name, Country. Then I'll click on Send Config. Again, watch the status in the bottom left corner. If successful, it will say Sending OK. That completes the initial configurator setup for the second RFP. Again, once the RFP has a valid IP address and is communicating with the network, you will see the light turn green. Now let's log into the OMM. Remember, the OMM IP address is the first RFP we turned up. So in my browser, I will enter 10.70.109.152. Go to Radio Fix Parts. If needed, click on the Start button to activate Capture Allowed. This is indicated by a green check mark. After a few seconds, you should see the second RFP. Above our first RFP, it says DEC cluster number one, and there is one RFP in this cluster. Let's also add the second RFP to this cluster, meaning these two RFPs will be synchronized in the same cluster, and can hand over active calls from one RFP to another as DEC handset users walk around. Click on the edit icon and enter the name. I will use RFP2 Texas east part of the building. Check the box to the left of deck settings, then enter the cluster number. This is what ties the RFPs together. And click on the OK button. I now have deck cluster number one with two RFPs in it. After a short time, you will see the second RFP become connected and active. As an additional note, once the new RFP becomes part of your system, the RFP's password is updated to your system password. For my example, it was OMM, the default. Now it's the system password which I created, which is DEC2134. So if we go back to the configurator to edit this RFP, we will need to use the system password from now on. Before we move on, I want to show you two additional pieces of information regarding the RFPs, which is how to set up multiple clusters and how to set up a second standby OMM.
Sometimes RFPs don't need to be part of the same cluster. For example, if they are in a different building, these RFPs can be put into a different cluster. RFPs in different clusters will not be synchronized with each other, meaning active calls will not be handed off or handed over between two different clusters. However, handsets will still be subscribed across the entire network or system. So when the DEC handset user goes to the other building, the handset will still work without requiring resubscription. To put an RFP in a different cluster, click on the Edit button. Change the cluster number. For this example, I will use the number 2 and click OK. Now I have cluster number 1 with one RFP and cluster number 2 with one RFP. To put the RFPs back in the same cluster, click on the Edit button. Change the cluster number back to 1 and click OK. There, I'm back to the original configuration. Deck cluster number 1 with two RFPs. By now, you should realize the OMM runs the entire DEC system, and the OMM is built into and running on our first RFP. To provide redundancy, you can designate a second standby OMM. So if something happens to the first OMM, which is running on our first RFP, a second OMM running on a different RFP can take over. To configure a second standby OMM simply requires adding one parameter to each RFP using the Configurator tool. So we will launch the Configurator, click on the Scan button, select the MAC address of the first RFP, check the login box, enter the login username and password, and press the List Configuration button to see our current configuration. Now, click on Add Parameter. Select Second OMM IP Address. Enter the second RFP's IP address. For this example, that will be 10.70.109.165. And then click on Send Config. Repeat the process for the second RFP. Click on the Mac. The login information will be stored while the current session is open. Press the List Configuration button. Click on Add Parameter. Select Second OMM IP Address. Enter the IP address. Again, for my example, it is 10.70.109.165. Then click on Send Config. One last thing, for every additional RFP that you turn up, you will need to add this parameter so that it will know how to get to the OMM and how to get to the second standby OMM. Now with this configuration, if anything happens to our first OMM, which is running on our first RFP, the second standby OMM, which is running on a different RFP, can take over. Be aware that the service will be interrupted for a small amount of time while the second OMM begins the process to take over the DEC system.